studying upon this word. I thought the last chapter in the book of Revelation tells us that if we add to these words, we'll add to this book, it'll be added unto us. If we take away from these words, our part of the book of life should be taken away from us. We know that what we're fixing to preach this morning is not going to be popular. We pray that you agree with us. If not, then pray heartily for us. But I'm feared that our country, I'm feared that our world is on a downward slide. And I would say that more than ever, and I'm not here to, to preach a doomsday prophet message, because there's always hope with Christ. But I feel like that our country has left its principles and went after the things of the devil. Our Supreme Court, men that we can't get rid of, whether we like them or not, which I always thought was a bad deal to start with, it ought to be elected. They ought to be just chosen and spent their lifetime. But they have went against the principles of our of a Christianity. This world is everything that's been done, the, the news, the whatever it is, everywhere you sit, it's always against you and I as Christians. And I, Jesus said that all that would live godly shall suffer persecution. And children, I'm going to tell you something. If you back up the Word of God, and I think we can back it up this morning, whatever we say about homosexuality and lesbianism and all this stuff, not only that, but a lot of other stuff involved too. If we're not willing to back that up, then we might as well back out and get away from it. Because Jesus, God, has stood against it through the ages. And people will interpret the way they want to interpret it, but my Bible said that God vomited at even the thought about a man living with a man. Or a woman with a woman. It's become so corrupt. And it's not only that, it's a lot of other things. We uh, live in a time, I marked down some stuff back, I think I said something about this in our Sunday school a little while back. Things that are going on that's taking precedent over the church. Our seats are not full this morning because of other things in this world. Right. I'm going to be honest with you. It's other things in this world. It's, it's things that's drawn people away from the church, not put them in church, but draw them away from the church. And the devil would like it. Now, I got kin folk. I, you know, I can stand here and say that. But we live in a time when people, I tell you, if you don't wake up, and my, I'm, I'm obligated by the power of God that's been invested in me as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'm obligated to tell the truth. And the Bible says the truth just, if you will hear the truth, the truth will set you free. But we live in a time when people have, uh, the Bible said, also it said, you know, come out from among them and be ye separate, thus saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. What I'm going to say this morning is backed up by the Word of God. And I hope you can agree with me, brother, brother uh, uh, Woody or David or whatever you want to call him. I call him everything. But what he said about Governor Pence is right. He took a stand. And I realize that politicians today that take a stand is going to suffer at it. And you know, I've, I've not been one to stand up and declare this party or that party. What I'm up here this morning to declare is that if we don't get back to God, we're in a mess. Our country needs to start praying. I'm not going to blame it on Washington, and I'm not going to blame it on uh, even the Supreme Court justice. I'm not blaming it on them. I'm blaming it on us. 
because we are allowing it. We're allowing it to happen, and we're sitting back, back meekly, accepting everything that comes along, and you say, well, it don't have nothing to do with me, so I'm going to let it go. You can't let it go, children, because it's, it's against everything that you've been taught as a Christian. I said I was going to preach them. I think I said them. I said 19th chapter. But it's 18th chapter of Revelation. If you like to turn over there, let's just read something. The reason why I believe that America is Babylon is because we are skating toward the same situation that Babylon did. The Roman Empire, with all the power that it had, all the might that it had, the Roman Empire ruled the world one time. And they had in place a government that was fair, a government that was good, but it kept on crumbling because it kept on going against what the principles of the, of the peace was about, the principles of the country. When sex, sports, and all this stuff is crawling in and stealing away people from church. You're upset, Brother Jim? Yes, I am upset. I feel like that if I don't tell you the truth, then I'm going to stand before God and, right. and I'm going to suffer the consequences. That's why that I'm telling you this. Yes, come on. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage for ever unclean and hateful bird. Yes. In other words, she's become corrupt. Children, this coming July the 4th, we, like I said, we'll be, rep, we'll be celebrating the independence of our country. And you know what? Every law that we've ever had up to this point has been based on? It's been based on the scriptures. Our forefathers, which were back then, God was an important part of the government. It was one that they went and prayed on their hands and knees for, that they would have the right guidance to guide our country by. And you know, it's what we don't understand today is, is why can't we get back to good, as Josh sang the song here, the good old time religion, the thing that will tell the truth, will not just build crowds in the church, but will tell the truth and make people that are strong because children are going to have to be strong Whenever this thing gets blown out, it's almost blown out already. Yes, yes. We're living in a time when we're going to have to make some decisions, children. And they're not going to be fun. I believe that God is warning us beforehand. <laughs> you say, why would you base it like that? Because how many people do you know that once was strong in the Lord. Today they're not very strong. Other things are more important to them. I want to tell you something. I don't care what you achieve in this life. I don't care if riches. I don't care if you what all you get in your life. When it comes to death, you'll say like that one is what profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? Or what would a man give in exchange for his soul? When we stand before God, what is it that we're going to say? Are we going to say, yes, Lord, I was there. I was obedient. I was, I was faithful to do what you asked me to. Are you going to be able to say that? If you are, then he's going to say, you ain't no good and faithful servant. But if you can't say that, he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I've never known you. Bad, isn't it? Yes, bad. That's the reason why I don't stand before God. And he said, why didn't you tell him? For all nations, 
had drunk of wine of the wrath of her for some fornication, and the kings of the earth had committed fornication with her. The merchants of the earth were waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. America is probably the only nation in the world that if it wanted to, it could be self-supporting. We have, God has given us everything that we need to supply us with a good country. But you know what? We went in Japan. Japan declared war on us. And after the war was over, after we tore the country all apart, we went in and rebuilt them again, got them set up, and now they own half of our nation. <laughs> True? Amen? Germany, the same way. Vietnam, the same way. Iraq, the same way. Afghanistan will be the same thing. We, friends, have been pulled pretty lean. <laughs> not much left of us. We're in so much debt that it's not even funny. We have to borrow off the Chinese. <laughs> Imagine that. Which not too many years ago was known as a third world country. But what I'm trying to say is this Babylon has been a lot of nations that's got rich off of us. A lot of nations got good off of us. And they're living a high life while you and I are suffering. I heard another voice come down from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Think about that now. That you not be partakers of her sins, that you receive not her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Reward, reward her even as she rewarded you. Double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she has glorified herself and lives deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she said that her heart I sit a queen and no widow and shall see no sorrow. Actually, we're a pretty proud country. And it's all right to, you know, to be a little bit proud. But when we boast about it, it becomes a problem to us. Because I want to tell you something. A lot of people don't, a lot of people really don't know how fragile. It is that this nation could be taken out in a moment's time. Listen as we read. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. I've heard people talk about this happen, that happen, this that we've got to go through all this before this happens. No, it said right here that these plagues can come in one day. <laughs> and bam, and she shall be utterly burnt with fire and strong as the Lord God who judgeth her. The Bible said in the Old Testament, he said, they shall have a phantom, not of food or drink, but of the word of God. Nobody is interested in the word of God. And it's the word of God that's going to pull us through. It's the word of God that's going to keep us. Without the word of God, you're not going to be able to survive. And the kings of the earth who have committed fortification shall live deliciously for her, shall be well her and laminate her, for when they shall see the smoke of her burning, a standing afar off for the fear of torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city. Now listen to what I'm going to tell you. For in one hour, this is what the Bible says, not me, in one hour is thy judgment come. In one hour thy judgment is come. I've heard people say it never happened. I worked at Steel Mill for 27 years. The business had been there for over 100 years. And they kept saying it's going to shut it down. And everybody said, no, they'll never shut this place down. It's been here too long. Well, then one Saturday morning I got a phone call and it was shut down. See, we need to be prayed up. Because it says right here, in one hour, not one week, not one year, not 20 years, not 30 years, but it said in one hour. That don't give you much 
time to get ready to meet the Lord. But I've got news for you. If you're not in, uh, saved right today, when that eastern sky splits open and you hear that trumpet blow and you hear the voice of an angel and the trump of God and Christ comes riding in with all his glory on the fly, with all his power on that cloud coming in, it's too late for you. Too late for you. Because it's already been said. Don't wait too long, children. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. You see, when the end comes to America, look at all the pressure it's going to put on those countries around that have depended on you and I all these years. That keep their, their economy going. If their economy goes bankrupt, we step in and we uh, loan them money and give them money and everything else to get them out of it. But, you know, I haven't seen anybody standing by us. I haven't seen China say, we're going to give you some money to help your situation a little bit. I ain't seen that. They loan it to us. That's the only way they'll give it to us. And I'm going to tell you something this morning. Children, we are in some kind of mess. Merchandise of gold, silver, precious stones, of pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, all fine, fine wood, all matter of vessels, ivory, all matter of vessels, most precious wood and of brass, iron, marble, cinnamon, all, all, all doors, ointments, frankincense, wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, beasts, sheep, horses, chariots, slaves, the souls of men. All these things. Leading until the end. The merchants of these things which were made rich for her shall stand afar off for fear of torment, weeping and wailing. Oh, what a world this must be going to be. You know, I'm glad that when Jesus does come, that I'll be gone. Aren't you? Amen. I don't have to look at it. Amen. I don't have to worry about it. For in one hour, uh oh, there's that one hour again. <laughs> One hour. I tell you what, children. I don't know what kind of God you think we have, but I'm going to tell you what kind of God I think we got. I think with the twitch of an eye lid, it can all come to an end. I believe it can. Actually, I don't believe there's nothing, hardly much left to be said, do you? Everything's been said. The stage is set. The curtain's about ready to be brought from board. And the grand finale is fixing to happen. And I hope that we are ready to meet him when he does happen. When they pull the curtains apart, you better be ready to go. Because if you're not, be left behind. For in one hour so great riches have come to naught, never ship master and all the companies and ships and sailors, as many as trade but seas to the far off. These men depended upon us for trade. These men depended upon us for jobs. Economies are going bankrupt in the world. People are going crazy with wailing and carrying on and crying and, and all these things. Because why? Because Babylon has been taken away from them. Uh, their meal ticket is gone. Huh? And children, that's what America is in most of the world today is a meal ticket to them. You think they got respect for you? They don't have no respect for you. They don't have any respect for nobody. They, all they're trying to do is take care of themselves. It's me and nobody else. Cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what city is like in this great city? I can imagine that, can't you? I can hear them say, America, America, the greatest land that there is, uh, all the riches and all the things that they had, all, all the goods, how God had blessed her, how God had given her all that she's got. And then one day she's going to be gone. All that stuff will be gone. And those people that look up on her, that depended on her, it's going to have a domino effect. It's going to start crumbling. The whole world's going to crumble, children, uh, because of this great fall that's coming. They cast dust on their head, cried, weeping, waiting, saying, Alas, alas, that great city we're in were made... All the ships in the sea, a reason of her costing us for in one hour, that one hour again. We can't get away from that one hour, can we? 
And at one hour she is made desolate. What's desolate mean? past week about this Paula Dean. You know, I hope her, well, I don't care if it's bugged or not, it may be bugged, you know, I heard it's because the government can do anything in what they want to. But over something a woman said 30 years ago, a word, the N word, I said, I don't believe there's an individual in this world, black or white, that's not at one time or another used that word. This other guy, Alex Baldwin, he used a slur word against the gays. And it seems like he's getting, you know, going right on down the road, you know, because he said, I didn't mean it, I was just a word term. Well, Paula Dean didn't mean it either. Because it was just something that we said. I don't know how many times I've said that word. It's not a nice word to say it. I don't say it now. You know. But I want to tell you something this morning. There's more things than just words to be said. You know, Dean, she may be a little, she might be just a little bit of a show person, you know. I don't know. I don't know that much about her. But when she made that statement, it said, whoever's without sin, first to cast stone. First, whoever without sin, cast the first stone. <laughs> I thought, oh my goodness, you know. I don't know, even the president might have to throw a stone. If he's so perfect. But I doubt it. Sue says, where's the freedom of speech? Why can't we, you know, why, what is it? Why can't we say something? We mean it. First off, I, like her, we don't use that word. But I want to tell you something this morning. There's a lot more words than that that is offensive. How many of you like to be called a honky? The other ones that she encountered. <laughs> I really I don't either. <laughs> but it's a slur. Or a cracker. <laughs> you see, what I'm saying is, I, I'm not uh, I'm not against race. I'm not a racist. But I'll tell you what is good for the goose is good for the gander. That's the way I look at it. And we live in a time when we all have to be so politically correct. But you, children, let me tell you what's politically correct. You're not able to go on news today and proclaim Jesus Christ as your Lord. It's not allowed. The actors on the TV shows anymore cannot use the word Jesus on it anymore. It's God. Because if we use it, Jesus, then we're prejudiced. 
We're trying to sell our religion. Good Lord in heaven knows I'd like to sell mine to everybody I can get in my ear. I'd love to sell it. I want them to know that there's no other way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If any man cometh unto me, so no man cometh unto me except he come to the Father. Yes. God said in his, Jesus, in the earth, he said, all power has been given to him both in heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. Jesus becomes the supreme commander. Anything I want, I have to go through Jesus. The Father will grant it, but i got to go through Jesus. If Jesus declares Jim Sharper needs something, God will take care of it. If Jim Sharper needs a healing, I go through Jesus, God will give it to him if Jesus declares it. So you know there's a lot of things that's wrong. And you say, well, Brother Jim, you sure are against the old United States this morning. No, I'm not against her. I've stood for for 70 years. Almost six years of my life that I've known that I can say that I'm an American and full blooded. But I don't like what's going on. And I believe we need to take a stand and declare it. You know, we get out among some friends and things. Are we afraid to say Jesus? Afraid that we're going to suffer some kind of persecution or something? Jesus said, If you're ashamed of me before the world, I'll be ashamed of you before my father and his angels. Yes. Yes. And that very is serious. If I'm ashamed of you, you know, Dave, I can't fix it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I can't fix it. I can't fix it, Chuck. But you know what can fix it? Oh, Prayer! <laughs> Praise God. Because, see, I'm under the in, uh, 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 impression that Prayer changes things. You say, well, I pray every day. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, a lot of times I catch myself praying like this. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for that. Be with all my friends. Help them, Lord. And help me the rest of the day. Amen. Goodbye. The Bible has said that those old priests would go into that temple. You know what they do? They'd grab hold of the horns of the altar and they wouldn't move until they got what they wanted. They wouldn't move until they got what they wanted. We got people who come and get saved in the church and we come up here. Save them, Lord. They come. Faith, get up. Get up. You're ready. Yeah. You don't know whether they're ready or not. Evidently, some ain't ready because you know you don't sit in their lives. You don't sit in church anymore. You don't sit doing what God wants them to they make promises, empty promises. Promises, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that, and then they don't do it. But I'm telling you this morning, children, you better be doers of the word, not hearers only. Because it's going to be a day coming. And we're all going to have to stand before Jesus. In this old book, I hold in my hand, says, and every man will give an account for every idle word. An account for every idle word. I say, <coughs> oh, I'll tell you, I know. You say, well, you are a doomsday prophet. <laughs> no, I'm not. I believe there's hope for our country. I'm going to use that term and I'm going to close. What I'm going to say is that, you know, Jesus told Abraham over there, he says, you know, if there's so many people in this city, I'll spare it. Talking about Solomon and Gomorrah. He went all the way down to, what was it, five. He said, if there's five righteous people in that there city, I'll, I'll, I won't destroy it. I believe there's more than five righteous people in America today. And America's got hope that brothers and sisters, we've got to pray. We've got to help that five. We've got to get along our side and be with them too. Okay, let's stand. Anybody this morning feel like you need to come to an altar? We're going to open this altar up to you. We're going to leave here you knowing that there's something in your heart that you need to do. That's why we open it. We give it an invitation.
Father, we thank you today, Lord, for, for the help you've given us, for the strength, for being able to proclaim the truth. We know our people here, Lord, and we know that they support us. And we just thank you for that. But, Lord, we know there's people outside the doors of this church against us 100%. And that's where we need your help at. We need you to help us. Give us strength. When they pounce on us, let us have the whole armor of God on us that we might be able to stand against their wiles. Give us strength whenever we feel weak. Give us hope when we have doubt. Just encourage us, Lord. And we pray, bless. Bless this church, Lord. Bless all the people that belong here. Just use them, Lord in a special way. We don't know what's out there behind the doors or the, uh, the roads or behind the cities or anything, but you did say one thing. You said go out on the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. So we're asking you again, Lord, help us. Help us this morning. And we'll, for, we'll forever praise your name. For it's in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>